But the headline catcher came when George Fury stole pole position for the 1984 James Hardy 1000 at Bathurst. Nobody believed the silent screamer could displace the muscle V8s of Peter Brock and Dick Johnson. But George did it, and he did it with style. Eighty-four was the last Hardy Classic for the Group C Road Rockets, and when the Group A International category commenced in Australia in January, Nissan failed to make the roll call. The team was regrouping, putting the finishing touches to a car which might rattle the V8s, given time. Have I got some good news for you? The new Group A Nissan Skyline made its entrance at a special media launch in Sydney this week. Decked out in its Peter Jackson colours, the Skyline is a potent little package. Two-litre, four-cylinder, double overhead cam, 16 valves, turbocharged and fuel injected. Good, huh? Howard Marsden, Fred Gibson and the Nissan team have been working hard on the Peter Jackson Skyline for several months. Extensive testing has been carried out at the Calder circuit near Melbourne, where the car has been well under the Group A qualifying times of last year. Former rally ace George Fury retains his spot as the team's lead driver. He believes the car will be a regular winner on the championship trail. Of course, overseas, the turbo cars have, have done great things and uh, they've won the European uh, Touring Car Championship. And uh, on having driven this car, I think that, that it's got a great deal of promise and, and uh, it's got a lot of power and, uh, and uh, good handling and good brakes. And it'll take a bit of fine-tuning, but... Uh, it won't, won't be too far into the season, I think uh, we'll, be, we'll be right there with the, with the top. George Fury will be joined in a second Peter Jackson Nissan by Glenn Seaton, while Queenslander Gary Scott will back up the drivers for the endurance events. After 16 months away from the spotlight of the Australian touring car scene, small car fans can rejoice this weekend, for no longer is Nissan Nissan. Well, we've got more in store for you. We're going now to uh, Mike Raymond and some information on the Touring Car Championship. Thank you, Gary Wilkinson. Well, 12 months ago, Peter Brock sat on pole position for the second round of the Australian Touring Car Championship at Sandown. It was the Commodore's first appearance in Group A. And today, for the opening round of the 86 Championship, George Fury has done it with the new Nissan Skyline. Pole position first up. It's almost like a dream come true, George. Well, it, well it's true, Mike. Uh, it's, it's great to uh, come back after a year of absence from racing and uh, and get into it like this and pole position was something that we just hoped for but uh, but it's great how much work did you put in here at the track before uh, practice yesterday well that's the amazing part that the car hasn't really been tested all that long we've only been out on one serious test session before we came to the track on thursday here and uh, the car is just so good that uh, you know we were able to do that time well, you've got Robbie Francovic on uh, the front row of the grid with you, so turbo power has certainly struck here for the opening round. Yeah, I, I think I think the, the, the difference is uh, who's wearing the better hat, and I, I think I am. George, you look magnificent. <laughs> Did you have to trade the beach one in on that? Yes, uh, yes, new, new hat, new car, new team. Well, you've got pole. How difficult will it be to win the race here over 52 laps? It will be difficult because uh, the car hasn't been run for that long in the one hit, and... Uh, but the, the car is reasonably light and it should be reasonably light on its tyres. It's very fast in a straight line. Uh, so we've got all hopes of, of uh, doing a good job of it tomorrow. And who do you see as the toughest man to beat in the field? Well, I, I think the Volvo will be. And of course, uh, Jimmy Richards is there. Uh, Dick Johnson's there. Brock is there. I mean, everybody's there. It's going to be a, a very close year this year, I believe. Well, congratulations again. I think you and Howard Marston and obviously Freddie Gibson will be all smiles. Uh, all all uh, pluses for Freddie Gibson, who's done a fantastic job in the time available to, to make such a good good car out of it. George Fury, who sits on pole for today's Australian Touring Car Championship opener here at Amaru Park. How it all pans out, we'll find out after this break. And welcome back to Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway, the scene for the Better Breaks 100, the opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship here this afternoon. Let's take a look at the grid, how they'll line up for the opening round of the title. George Fury sitting there on pole position. Robbie Francovic will start from two. 
back in the second row, Dick Johnson of Queensland in the Mustang from three, and Jim Richards in the BMW from four. The next row back is Peter Brock from five in car five, and from position six, car number two, Graham Bailey. The unsponsored car from seven is car number 75, Colin Bond, a great qualifying effort from eight. 25, Tony Longhurst of Queensland in the BMW. The next row back sees car number three, John Harvey of the mobile dealer team, starting out of nine. And from position 10, car 33, Mike Bergman in the Commodore. From 11 is car number seven, Charlie O'Brien of Queensland in the BMW. And from position number 12 is car number 12, Gary Wilmington in the Jaguar XJS. A full field of starters. Behind Gary Wilmington, Brian Callahan, Graham Crosby of New Zealand in the Commodore, Kevin Bartlett in the Starion, Terry Finnegan, Gary Rogers, Alf Grant, Ken Matthews, Gerald Kay, Graham Hooley, Ken Davidson, Bob Holden, Laurie Hazelton, and Peter Williamson. They're ready, they're set for the opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship from Sydney's Amaru Park. The better brakes, 100. Turbo Prayer, the front row. About six seconds away from the start. in the Australian Touring Car Championship and New Zealand's Robbie Francovic and Aubrey's George Fury go out at Hammer and Tongs. Francovic will win the drag to the top of the hill. Johnson away smartly. And then Jim Richards being shouldered off as Peter Brock makes a run up the inside but Francovic takes the lead. Fury in second. Third place held down by Dick Johnson. Then the chicken man going through. Richards a beautiful inside pass in the two mobile Commodores. Longhurst made a blinder as well as they head down the back part of the course where George Fury takes over the lead in the Nissan Skyline. Great start to this opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship Series and look at Fury, will you? Turbo power off the front row of the grid. He and Robbie Francovic side by side up the top of the hill and Fury winning out of the initial battle. Dick Johnson just in behind them as they go down to the late corner for the first time. Then the uh, plain white car of Graham Bailey. Well, that was a tremendous start from Bailey in a brand new car. He took delivery of the vehicle last Wednesday, a car built by Roadways in Melbourne, the Les Small organisation, and in fourth position at the end of the fourth, uh, fourth, first lap as George Fury leads from Francovic and Dick Johnson. They've completed one of 52 circuits of Sydney's Amaru Park. Peter Jackson, this and Skyline, and George Fury leads from Francovic, Johnson. And the next one to go through is the strong qualifier, Graham Bailey and the Commodore, unsponsored, but doing one heck of a job as he drops up into fourth place as they race down the back part of the course. Jim Richards behind him, then Peter Brock, John Harvey, and then, of course, Tony Longhurst. Harvey had trouble with a rotor button this morning in the Commodore. They've sorted that problem out, although we did see him stop on the warm-up even prior to this race. We hope everything's OK with car number three. There's Jim Richards, the man who won the Australian title, and here he comes down the inside. Just can't maneuver it. Yes, he does. Straight down under brakes on the inside of Graham Bailey. You want to go racing? Want the championship? I'm after it. And here's John Harvey in the second of the dealer team Commodores coming up as well behind Jim Richards. Gentlemen, Jim feeling the pinch just a little bit in the opener. And Brock and Peter, through. And Peter Brock through as well as they race up on the outside. Let's see whether they can pass last year's champ. One passes. That's Harvey. Here's Brock up on the outside of Jim Richards and takes the inside run. Will he do it over? the top now he can't the commodores with almost 400 brake horsepower the bmw 300 the commodore a fraction heavier but by g the 86 evolution is really working for the dealer team keep your eyes on tony longhurst will certainly be doing that will the tires last on the commodores over the 52 lap journey that's the big question there's john harvey doing nicely there in car number three. Oh, one around sideways going off the circle pick that up for you later here's harvey it was Jimmy. bailey Jim Richards right behind him and Brock warming to the task of also passing Richards as they head down to the bottom corner. The scrap continues for the lead here is Jim Richards moving to the outside. Harvey is there as well. There's uh, Kevin Bartlett by the look of things with the Starion that is not firing. Coming across the line, Tony Longhurst coming up to give his JPS teammate a little support as Peter Brock looks for a way past Jim Richards and Longhurst is back behind him. Robbie Francovic goes back into the lead, this time over the top of Nissan Skyline. George Fury still in second spot, and Queensland's own Dick Johnson still in third. I think George got in trouble coming up onto the main straight. Francovic darted by, and Dick Johnson almost got the Nissan as well. Well, Bailey's gone. He spun off one lap earlier in this position here. So it's car number 10, Robbie Francovic, in the Volvo 242 Turbo with around about 80 or 90 metres over George Fury. Dick Johnson plunging through, looking for a gap for second place. He's doing a great job in the Mustang. 
Here they come through the bend and back onto the start finishing straight. Kiwi lands Robbie Francovic doing one super job as he goes across the line. And we join race cam now as we head up towards Mitchell Bayfield with Dick Johnson. And he is chasing George Fury in the Nissan Skyline. Down into the right-hander, incidents galore in this touring car championship. We've got one of them coming up for you shortly. And let's take a look at it. Dick Johnson going through with the pack, and here is Graham Bailey getting out of shape, going across the circuit on the exit to Mazda Corner. There's only a bank out there to hit, but Bailey gets the brakes on. The car is ploughing it through and stops short of the bank. Graham Bailey exits the Australian Touring Car Championship round one. Dick Johnson still in third behind Robbie Francovic and George Fury. And the Mustang really working hard trying to get some grip. A fair bit of horsepower from this beast and Dick Johnson having all sorts of strife this weekend trying to get it to the ground on the short circuit. Well, Jeff Francovic is galloping away up front now in the Volvo. Really opening up quite a commanding lead over George Fury in the Nissan Skyline, then Johnson. And uh, quite a gap then back to John Harvey in the first of the dealer team Commodores, followed by Jim Richards, then Peter Brock. By comparison to Francovic's performance here last year at this round, Francovic has come down some two seconds a lap in lap time, so they've done some great development work with the car. Last I was just about to say that Francovic didn't even make the uh, touring car starting lineup last year. Actually, a wheel fell off the car around about this part of the circuit, and he was a casualty even before the green flag. There he is, though, the man who uh, sat on pole position for the Wellington 500 street race, failed to finish it, and also the follow-up event in New Zealand. But he's back campaigning the touring car title in the Mark Petch uh, Turbo Volvo, and looking very strong at this stage. He leads George Fury and Dick Johnson. The dealer team Commodores are now running fourth and fifth, Harvey and Brock. Brock having got by Jim Richards, and Richards, in fact, is under pressure now from teammate Tony Longhurst in the BMW 325. Well, it was uh, Jim Richards' decision not to run the 325. He wanted to run the 635. And I think, uh, well, we'll wait and see the way the race pans out. It might have been the wrong decision. Terry Finnegan running strongly in the Huon Valley Commodore V8. But here's Johnson closing a little this time on George Fury as they come down through Mazda and the downhill run to the left-hander at Mazda Corner. Francovic running away. Second of the turbo cars, driven by George Fury, the Peter Jackson entry. And here's the scrap. The two mobile Commodores of uh, John Harvey and Peter Brock. And two BMWs, Richards in 62. And of course, in the number 25 car, Tony Longhurst. We've got two teams here. And they're having a great scrap. The mobile team that are going overseas to campaign the European Touring Car Championship the JPS BMW team that ran so strongly in last year's Australian title. Longhurst is running the 325 Series BMW, an extension of last year's 323. It's now 200cc, bigger in the engine. Slightly different brakes, a little bit more horsepower, but it'll be very good round this circuit towards the end of the race. What a battle this is between the JPS team and the mobile team with Brock leading the bunch, then Harvey, then Richards, then Longhurst. Quite a decision for Tony Longhurst to make, whether to go on with this or sit in behind the uh, the team leader. I know what I'd do if I had the chance. Go for it. I think Tony's going to do that shortly. Francovic extends his lead by 200 metres to George Fury. Five back to Johnson, 100 back to Brock. And right behind Brock Harvey, Jim Richards and Tony Longhurst. Francovic's lead now three seconds plus and pulling away from George Fury. favourite circuit, Amaru Park. Pretty hard on the, uh, the V8 cars, always has been. Their biggest problem is uh, literally just getting uh, the car to track straight here. We can see Peter Brock in strife, under brakes, through the turns, the car slipping and sliding. It's 1,325 kilograms and it's carrying 100 kilograms of lead ballast just to bring it up to that weight. So it's one of the heavier cars in the field and uh, they're still running the same rim and tyre size that they ran last year, so more horsepower, they have to pull it up in a hurry, it's hard on brakes, it's hard on tyres. Certainly well suited to some of the other longer and faster circuits. As we saw in New Zealand. Down towards the lake again. John Harvey, number three, running the second of our Channel 7 race caps. There we take the pictures. He's following Peter Brock and he's got the two JPS BMWs neatly tucked in behind him giving Brock a bit of a break on the field as he goes out chasing Dick Johnson. Heading up Bitcher Pave Hill, you can see Brock, and just ahead of Brock, of course, is Dick Johnson. 
and uh, George Fury in the Nissan Skyline, the Peter Jackson entry. They're all a long way from Robbie Francovic, though, at the moment, even at this early stage of the race. There he is in the turbocharged Volvo and a big space, clear space behind him as he goes over the back part of the circuit down to Honda Corner. We've really got this car running smoothly, super smooth. There's lots of rumours buzzing about the pits at the moment as to the future of the Volvo team in Australia. We believe that uh, there will be an announcement shortly. But certainly the Volvo is now starting to get its act together for the uh -huh. 86 season. And now Dick Johnson threw into second place in car number 17. And George Fury drops back to third. We'll see them here as they come through Wonderlick and onto the main straight. And Queensland's top banana, Dick Johnson, in second spot. And Peter Block's getting pretty close now too. So Dick Johnson gains one. He moves to second. George Fury goes back to third after sitting on the pole. And here comes Peter Brock in 05. Brock will be running today's race and, of course, next weekend heads off to Simmons Plains in Tasmania for the second round of the title. And after that, it's off to Monza for the opening round of the European Championship with Alan Moffat. Well, you know, whatever uh, the Commodores do here at Amaru, they're going to go yards better at places like Simmons Plains. George Fury, what a debut for the Peter Jackson Nissan Skyline. Brand spanking new car to bring it out and put it on pole position. He's still doing a great job running in third. But Peter Brock's getting closer to him. Johnson's already made the swish. He's gone to second. And now Brock and Harvey and the two BMWs close up on George Fury. They set the Nissan up with a very low ride height and very hard springing. And as a consequence of that, it seems to be oversteering a fair bit and giving rear tyres a hard time. And we were looking at the car in the pits this morning and even the team were wondering about how it would last when it was sliding around as much. Now Brock starts to really challenge the Nissan across the top. I think he even got his hand out the window there. That wouldn't be Brock if he, <laughs> if he couldn't get it out and wave someone. But uh, he was under a lot of pressure a few laps back, Peter Brock. He's managed to close it up now, looking for uh, third place. Closes on George Fury, tail out again. Looks like the um, Ignis Alpha entry of uh, Colin Bond has some problems. They're changing tyres, obviously. Looking under there for some suspension uh, problem or engine problem. Enrico Zanarini there, team manager for Alfa Romeo. Brock was running in eighth place when he did uh, call into the pits. Uh -oh, but, trouble uh, he, for Harvey oh. in car number three. He slowed, almost stopped. He's been dogged by problems even since uh, Thursday here in practice. I don't know whether he's got enough uh, momentum to be able to get back to the pits. He's certainly trying to. Is that something dragging under the car or just my imagination? Well, it's very low to the ground, whatever it is. Graham Crosby goes through. So Harvey still tries to get into the pit area, and Peter Brock takes uh, George Fury in the Nissan Skyline to pick up third place. Dick Johnson's ahead of him on the racetrack, and 150 metres ahead of Johnson is the race leader, Robbie Francovic, in the Mark Fetch Turbo Volvo. 12 down and 40 remaining. Skyline under uh, pressure now from both the BMWs, Jim Richards and Tony Longhurst, so uh, George has really got his hands full out there today. Yes. Coming up to uh, the distant skyline is, of course, the JPS uh, duo, Tony Longhurst. He's done a great job to be positioned where he is, and that car will only get stronger as the race progresses. It's not carrying the weight. It seems to have uh, enough grunt to really uh, get around Amaru Park quite quickly. But George goes over the line with the two black and gold cars following him up Pave Hill again. Over the top they go. Fury leading that trio. Defending champion Jim Richards right behind him, but up front it's Robbie Francovic in the Volvo, leading Dick Johnson's Mustang and 0-5 Peter Brock in third place after 13 out of 52 laps in the Better Breaks 100. Welcome back to Amaru Park and the Australian Touring Car Championship continues and Queensland's favourite son, Dick Johnson, is in second place and that must feel comfortable at this stage, Dick. Yeah, mate, I'm a bit busy, I tell you. It's the sort of track that keeps you busy. You're not wrong. Poor old tyres are really coming a workout. She's pretty loose in the rear end. God, I tell you what, that Volvo, mate, it's like... It's probably like uh, President Margos's pockets when he left the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about you. You haven't lost your sense of humour. You're running in second at the moment. How much do you expect your tyres to go off as you get towards half distance? <laughs> No more than what they already have, I hope. <laughs> I see. Otherwise, I'll be getting a lot busier than what I am now, I tell you. 
Yes, it's really uh, a problem, and the traffic's a problem around here when you come up on slower cars. Well, I think it's... Where the problem comes in is in traffic like this. And now, now Brock's brought up, you see? That's what I mean about bloody guys that get in the goddamn road and spoil a good race. Well, we're not going to spoil a good race. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for the call. All right, pal. Oh. Dick Johnson. And the man who is really howling in the traffic is, of course, Tony Longhurst, car number 25. The car that was uh, offered to Jim Richards to drive, you can see that Longhurst is running away from Jim Richards at this stage. That wouldn't please Richards. It would certainly please at least Frank Garner because he's got a light car, enough power, and he's going to make it very difficult for not only uh, Peter Rock, but also for Dick Johnson over the distance. It's amazing. This car just would not go in uh, practice and in qualifying on uh, Saturday. And Richards opted to, uh, to go back to the 635 in which he won the touring car title last year. And lo and behold, Longhurst has slipped into the 25 car and uh, it's going like smoke. They were expecting more brake horsepower in uh, this car than they really got. And I think that was the reason that Richards went back. But the thing that was really going to put this car towards the head of the field at the end of the 52 laps was the way it was going to handle its tyre wear. Well, we're not at the end of the 52 yet That's and right. he's already up there. Well, he's maintaining his pace while the others are going off all the time. So Longhurst now getting the 05 Commodore lined up in the gun sights. And as we heard Dick Johnson say a few moments ago, Peter Brock breathing right up his exhaust pipe as well. Well, there's the two cars that uh, Tony Longhurst is closing on. Dick Johnson, of course, and uh, Peter Brock. At this stage, Robbie Francovic in car number 10 still continues to lead and quite comfortably the opening round of the touring car title. About 300 metres ahead. Dick Johnson is in second place. Peter Brock followed by Tony Longhurst. Jim Richards is the next place driver. And just back behind him, of course, we take in our race leader, Robbie Francovic, and doing it quite nicely out in front. Not really the track that suits the Volvo, but doing it comfortably. Robbie Francovic, let's take a look. What makes the man and his success? He won, of course, the Oran Park and Simmons Plains round of the 85 Australian Touring Car Championship. He won the 85 Distance Sport 500 in Wellington. 44 years of age from Auckland and driving the Volvo Turbo. Turned out by the Mark Petch crew. Robbie Francovic in the Turbo Volvo and doing strongly here today. 20 laps completed out of 52. There's the man. Well, gee, at this rate, 32 laps remaining the way he's going, they're going to be very hard put to reel this leader in. Well, the patch team and chief mechanic Wayne Eckersley appeared as though they've sorted out their reliability problems now with the Volvo and the car is flying. He's not putting a foot wrong and he's still opening up that gap. And we'll check that gap. It's time to come around on the Nissan in the pits. Fred Gibson, team manager, leaning through the right-hand door, talking with Fury. And the dream run appears to have come to a close with a wheel off there. I wonder whether or not they did end up chewing out a set of tyres like we suspected. And uh, let's have a look at how Peter Brock's going in the field because there's a real battle on here between himself and Dick Johnson. Tony Longhurst right behind him and this is where all uh, attention will be focused for the next few laps because it's that little black car, just 960 kilograms, that's right into the boot of the Holden Commodore. Uh, do you remember uh, it was Longhurst that gave Brock some hurry up here at the final meeting yeah. last year? Dick Johnson tried to do his best in second spot. The Volvo has already gone up the hill, so it's 300 metres ahead and still doing it very easily. Johnson running in second place in the fresh air this time. Pulls away a little bit from Peter Brock. Uh, Brock has Tony Longhurst uh, closing on him on the tight part of the course. But, of course, the V8 power comes into play as they go up the top of Bichipay Hill. And that's where they pull away from Longhurst. He grabs them back very, very quickly, though, as they drop into the loop area. Longhurst will contest the entire Australian Touring Car Championship and they'll swing in between the 325 and the 635 car. And of course, this little car will be perfect at circuits like Calder and Winton as well. While all this action's going on, the uh, Nissan that we saw in the pits a few moments ago is going to pull in there again. It went back out just for the one lap, but I think it uh, might have run its race for the day. Bad luck after doing such a great job to qualify in pole position but couldn't stand the heat uh, under race conditions. Well, 
Johnson managing to maintain that gap between himself and Brock at the moment. With Brock under siege. Uh, it's actually it's working in Johnson's favour, I think. Uh, Brock having to pay quite a bit of attention to uh, the attack on his rear bumper by Longhurst. This is the battle for second, third and fourth, and Longhurst knows that the longer he stays there, the better off the situation becomes for him. It's quite amazing, you know, how much uh, Longhurst has dropped off Jim Richard in the 635 car. Mm. Very surprising. But let's bear in mind that the 635 BMW hasn't had any of the ele uh, evolutionary changes that the other cars have had. The Mustang's quicker now, the Commodore is quicker, the little 325 has come along perfectly suited to this circuit. And there's even more goodies coming for the Volvo later in the year. Well, Jim is number one and he has the choice of cars. Uh, I think we'll be seeing him stick with the 325 next meeting. Well, the man won 11 out of 11 races here at Amaru Park last year. The run had to end sometime. Round one of the Touring Car Championship looks like being the end of that run. Tony Longhurst, the man on the move at the moment, still has to pass Peter Brock and Dick Johnson. Of course, he can close on them in the tight part of the uh, racetrack. There are a few of those. But for straight line uh, power, of course, Brock and Johnson are able to run away from him coming up the hill. And of course, uh, on the short straights, a little wander that time from uh, Longhurst. But Johnson still holding down second. Heading down to the bottom corner. And the race leader still is Robbie Francovic. Second place is being held down by Queensland's Dick Johnson. And third, of course, by Melbourne's Peter Brock. Sol, Sol, you are in a deep trance. Now repeat after me. Oils is oils. No, no. Oils ain't oils. You can't resist, Sol. But GTX protects engines, reduces friction. It's worth a few extra cents. OK, great. There's more. The game is up. Sol don't use nothing except GTX. And now we're going to watch you put yourself into a deep trench. You mean a deep... I mean a deep trench. And remember, soils ain't soils. Welcome back to the Australian Touring Car Championship and just look at this scrap between Tony Longhurst, Peter Brock and Dick Johnson. They've been swapping for the last uh, two laps of this race. Here's Johnson fighting back. He, of course, was taken uh, by Brock. Brock's moved to third. Johnson is fourth. Priest Fender, too, by the look of it. And Tony Longhurst has really been harrying these two V8s. This is where the interest is in the race. Robbie Francovic will go to him later, but, of course, he's leading it and increasing his lead all the time. Johnson back to second. To the top of the hill. Well, Longhurst getting out of shape. I think that he's uh, really starting to push the issue, perhaps just a fraction too early. 27 laps down out of 52, and we all know that the tyres of the Commodore and the Mustang probably won't hold up. So Tony really forcing the pace. He just doesn't want to force it too much. Just recapping again, it was incorrect last time. The race, race leader, Robbie Francovic, second Peter Brock, third Dick Johnson, fourth is Tony Longhurst. And let's have a look at how Longhurst put the pressure on Dick Johnson and Peter Brock. Caught out wide, Johnson finds Brock snapping down the inside of him. That takes away second on the road, but look at Longhurst getting the car absolutely sideways. And of course he skated past Dick Johnson, but Johnson has come back to take him again. Close racing in the opening round of the Touring Car title. Real double shuffle there, and it uh, ended up putting Longhurst back uh, into fourth position. Still pressuring Dick Johnson, though, and giving Peter Brock a bit of a breathing space now. As he moves away from that pair, but uh, in a almost futile pursuit, I think, of Robbie Francovic, unless something goes wrong with the Volvo, and it doesn't look like it at this stage. Francovic's gap over Brock is now something like 15 seconds, so he keeps pulling out a second a lap here and there. Now Peter Brock has managed to open up a gap over Dick Johnson. Interesting scrap this because you'll notice Peter Brock coming out of the turn. Dick Johnson is there, Longhurst is there, and Jim Richards starting to come back on the boil again in the BMW 635. Is he going to prove us all uh, <laughs> bad judges and come home in this car yet? Could be. He's done it before. Richards uh, knows this circuit well. He's won a lot of races here. He's in fifth place, uh, Jim Richards, on the track at the uh, present time. And sixth place is held by uh, New Zealand's Graham Crosby driving a Commodore, but well oh, back at this stage. Oh, Tony. 
he's going to be he's so lucky to save that. There he goes. Bang on the inside of Johnson. Dickett love that. He climbs up on the curve all over it as well. Jim sitting back behind, just thinking, well, it won't be too long before I sh should be able to do the same. Johnson, meantime, is uh, feeling the pinch. As he said to us earlier, tyres had already gone off. So he's battling uh, tyre wear the biggest possible way. And Longhurst now, with a little bit of uh, breathing space, will go after Peter Brock. And while that's happening, Jim Richards is closing in for the kill on uh, Dick Johnson. After 30 laps, Robbie Francovic leading the race from 0-5, Peter Brock. Then 25, Tony Longhurst and 17, Dick Johnson. Jim Richards is next on the racetrack, followed, as I said, by Graham Crosby. But uh, Robbie Francovic, as we said, doing it so well up front. Dick Johnson comes down into the loop area and from race cam, of course, there's the scrap in front. Tony Longhurst trying to come up on a slower car, takes him on the inside. Peter Brock just ahead of the two of those. Longhurst uh, still doing a bit of wobbling in the car. Yeah, he's getting sideways a lot. There's Terry Finnegan and Ewan Valley entry. Six. He's been smoking the last uh, couple of laps, but uh, Johnson manages to put a, a lap on him. and comes out still chasing, of course. Uh, Look for the uh, race cam shot as the car comes around here. You get an idea of the phenomenal crowd that's jammed Amaru Park today for this Better Breaks 100. Is our race leader, Robbie Francovic of New Zealand and the Mark Petch. Volvo Turbo, number 10. Car that was hot and cold last season. I'll tell you what, might be running cool, but it's a very hot combination of Francovic and the Volvo for season 86. Francovic had a couple of wins last year, a second, a fourth, a sixth, a seventh, a ninth. Two did not finish results, one pole position, and he didn't start one of the rounds. Coming up, of course, on Mike Bergman in number 33. Let's go back and have a look at the BMW action. And it's been intense uh, here as Longhurst keeps the pressure going on Peter Brock. Brian Callahan just in front there, but he's about to have a lap put on him by Dick Johnson. That all happens as we, as we speak. And now Longhurst and Peter Brock. Frank Gardner looks worried. Not really. He looks that way, but he's happy. Richards has closed right up on this group as well and is uh, right on Dick Johnson's tailpipe, so it's a four-way dice now. Yes, it's on for second place in earnest. Gentlemen, Jim, 62, the second of the uh, JPS cars, carrying also uh, sponsorship logos for Bob Jane t -Mart, who, of course, are strongly supporting Gary Rogers and another Frank Gardner prepared BMW for the ATCC for 1986. He's, in fact, uh, out on the racetrack in seventh place at the moment, Gary Rogers, in the second of the 325 BMWs. Richards owns a T-Mart in Melbourne, in the suburb of uh, Coburg. And, and of course, now. Longhurst has gone through on the run into the loop area. Here's Richard starting to put some muscle up on Dick Johnson. Sorry, Dick, he says. A man has to do what a man has to do. And takes Brock on the same straight. With a lot of, with ease. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's happened to Brock here. And you heard how hard it was for Johnson to get power to the ground as he came out of there in third. And now Johnson makes a move on Peter Brock side by side. And out comes the hand. Peter Brock acknowledging something. Well, is it a flag or has he got a problem with the Commodore? He's gone to the bridge. Richards goes through. Then Johnson. Brock has disappeared to pit lane. So the two uh, mobile Commodores in the pits... Really, I guess in uh, Peter Brock's uh, situation, the tyres have gone off. And uh, as you can see, they're going for a change of rubber. Maybe uh, 52 laps around Amaru Park, perhaps like a 500k race at any other racetrack. Well, it looks like they've gone back on to Pirelli D3s. I think they started the race on the D3 compound, which is the harder of the Pirelli radial tyre compounds. Tony Di Gennaro there, the team manager, just to the left of screen. We can barely see him. The car up on its central jacking system and leaves the pits again, but he would have lost probably a good lap in that exercise. He certainly lost a lap to uh, the race leader. There he is, Robbie Francovic, because Francovic just went straight past as Brock was coming out of the pits. Well, there he is, the man leading the opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship in car number 10. It's Robbie Francovic of New Zealand. Second spot being held down by Tony Longhurst in the BMW 325 and third place by his teammate, Jimmy Richards.
Back at Amaru Park as the Villa Breaks 100 unwinds. First round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. This man is holding down sixth place on the racetrack. It's Graham Crosby from New Zealand in a Holden Commodore. Just up ahead of him on the track in the third of the JPS BMW cars is Gary Rogers. This is the car that was campaigned last year at the James Hardy 1000 and other Australian events by Denny Holm and Ray Smith. It was formerly the Auckland Coin and Bullion car, now in the hands of Graham Crosby, who finished second in the World Motorcycle Championships back in 82 for Team Yamaha. Charlie O'Brien just in behind this pair too. You've probably seen, there he is, just slipping into uh, the view through the corners in the yellow number seven car, that's him. The bumper to bumper BMW. Crosby remembered for his brilliant rides here at Amaru Park probably 10 or more years ago now on the Kawasaki. Now adapting extremely well in the 86 Evolution Holden Commodore. This is Gary Rogers, the second of the 325 BMWs in this field. Rogers is in fact now the owner of the car that uh, Jim Richards is driving, but as we've spoken about already, they decided to do the old switcheroo on Saturday because uh, Jim felt happier in the bigger car, so Gary inherited the smaller one once again. And he will contest the entire Australian Touring Car Championship under the colours of Bob Jane t -Marts. His car will be repainted orange when Richard's new car is ready. It's a ready. big break and a deserving break, I think, for an aggressive driver like Gary Rogers. He's a good campaigner, very quick. And at this stage of the game, up in fifth position. 13 so, laps remaining, in fact, with uh, Rogers in fifth from the top. It's Robbie Francovic still at the head of affairs by a big space ahead of Tony Longhurst in the first of the JPS cars, then teammate Jim Richards, followed by Dick Johnson's Mustang in fourth place. Then car number 23, the man we're talking about, Gary Rogers, and uh, the car behind him, of course, Graham Crosby from New Zealand, and uh, Charlie O'Brien closing up quite quick, quickly now in uh, the yellow BMW. Yes, the O'Brien car is the ex Archibald, Trevor Crow, Neville Crichton, and uh, Tony Longhurst car. So Charlie doing very well in that, and he now owns two of those 635 BMWs. Dick Johnson campaigns in car number 17, still doing. Uh, quite nicely. He's been feeling the pinch just a little today, as most of the uh, V8 drivers have been, of course, with uh, with tyre wear at uh, Amaru Park. They're carrying race cam for us. Oh, mate. You're having a good day, mate. Oh. Holy cow. I do not believe what this is like. I tell you what, even Peter Perfect didn't have time to do his arm exercise out the window. <laughs> I tell you what, what, if, what would you say if I said to you they were thinking about doing a 24-hour race at Amaru Park? <laughs> Mate, you've got to be kidding. What for? Yes, it's a bit hard on the V8s. You guys really do carry a handicap here against the small... It makes it pretty hard because, like, you, you're never straight around here. And when your tyres are off, you're not even straight going up the straight. <laughs> Tell me, in a perfectly set up V8, how long does it take for the tyres to go off when you're racing here? Oh, probably 10 laps, and you, and you really start to feel them uh, wander away. See, bear in mind that this car is the same weight as Brock's, and about 200 odd kilos heavier than, than Jim's BMW, and probably about 450 or 500 kilos heavier than that little 325. Would you say so, this is the... Would you, well, say, you know, all we need is five guys your size in the car with them and that'd be about right, wouldn't it? <laughs> Watch it, Smarty. <laughs> I was going to ask you, is this the toughest racetrack on a, in Australia for the cars and for tyres, V8s? In Australia it is, but, uh, boy, in temperatures like this, that Wellington track in New Zealand was unbelievable. Well, Dick, I think we better leave you to it because uh, there's still quite a few laps to go before the finish and you've got your work cut out for you. We can see that. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. OK, pal. Catch you later. OK. Dick Johnson, who we've been following with race camp. The gap between Francovic and Johnson is now 19 and a half seconds and Robbie Francovic has been doing extremely well in this race, running his own race well ahead of the field. And there he is, coming through the sweeper at the back part of the course, just as Dick Johnson negotiates the front straight, so it's becoming a third of a lap or more lead now. Well, technically, for the times that uh, Francovic uh, has been doing, 42 of 52 completed, 10 remain, obviously. But Francovic, with uh, tyres, and he had tyre problems last year, but he's been able to do this ever so casually today. Yes. So, here's one, Kevin Bartlett, I think. Uh, yeah. Starion going left-right. 
And in the meantime, of course, uh, Robbie goes through in car number 10. Brock has gone round past France if he can unlap himself, and I think he's up to eighth position at the moment, so that pit stop didn't cost him quite as much time as I thought. Well, it might be fresh for the final sprint, but at least the tyres, judging by what Dicker said, will probably be off in eight laps again anyway. This car's done some work now, hasn't it? It uh, won the Wellington 500 a couple of years ago, 85, back there when uh, Michel Delcourt came out from Belgium and partnered uh, Mark Petch and Robbie Francovic. It did last year's Touring Car Championship, the Amscar Series, the Endurance Series, the New Zealand Series early this year and starts off another bout in 86. The interesting thing is, of course, that uh, Francovic last year uh, won his first round of the Touring Car title at Simmons Plains, where, of course, uh, our seven cameras will be visiting next weekend for round two of the 86 series. But, of course, the Brock Commodore is showing out so strongly and George Fury in the Nissan. It's more of a power track, not as many turns and twists. The Commodores will be really good at I Simmons. I think there'll be a crackerjack race at Simmons Plains next weekend. Nine laps remaining for Robbie Francovic. In the Volvo, about 340-odd brake horsepower at his disposal and using it nicely. I think the champagne call to be popping in the France of Vic, uh, tent tonight yeah, with Mark Petch. Provided the turbo doesn't pop. Which no, I don't think it well has been running strongly. They deserve a good win here. And I tell you, this is the toughest little outfit in uh, Australia to win on. Weather conditions, in fact, played into their hands today because they were forecasting clear skies and very warm temperatures. It's still moderately warm but uh, overcast and I think they'll be happy about that. Crosby in trouble there yes. in car 20. So it's not been a good day for the general. Oh, Graham Crosby who gave this a good shot heading back slowly to the pit area. He'll be campaigning in the um, Australian Touring Car Championship. But this is the better brakes 100 and the brakes are certainly going the way of Robbie Francovic. Car number 10. Increasing that lead all the time. Jim Richards has managed to elevate himself above Tony Longhurst as well, which is a tremendous effort from him in the 6.35. And you can see that Francovic now really in cruise mode. The car not leaping around at all, not sliding. The driver really doing a good job. And major support this season from Castrol. He had a lot of support from uh, Swedish companies uh, in New Zealand for the uh, two races over there. So Robbie Francovic, car number 10, just doing it nicely, very comfortably ahead. But I'll tell you what, uh, I think his times have gone off the boil the last couple of laps. He's just coasting now. His lead is in excess of 20 kilometres. There's Terry Finnegan in the middle of the Amaru Park complex with steam and water and oil and all sorts of things coming out of the Huon Valley Springs entry. I think it sprung a leg. <laughs> oh. Okay, heading up to the top of the hill, the Kiwi lands. Robbie Francovic continues to lead the better breaks. 100. Second place being held down by gentleman Drum Richards, and third place to Queensland's Tony Longhurst. laps remaining in the Better Breaks 100 first round of the Touring Car Championship at Amaru. Will that be enough time for Jim Richards in 62 to uh, bridge a very big gap on the race leader, Robbie Francovic? Uh, not unless something goes wrong with Francovic, I feel. <laughs> Although, I tell you what, the lead is not as big as it was. No. I noticed that before we went to our last break that uh, Jim was closing. It's about 120 metres, as opposed to, I reckon it must have been 250 in the mid-stages of the race. Wilco, you must have your glasses off. It's the best 120 metres I've ever seen. It's 6.7 seconds. Well, anything can happen in motor racing and probably will, kid. They head to the top of Bitcher Pave. And Jim Richards, the man who dominated the Australian Championship for 85, with 7 out of 10 wins in second spot at the moment today. And it's gliding a little bit uh, coming out of the corner. Robbie Francovic of New Zealand continues to lead. Peter Brock's trying to catch back a fair bit of ground as well as they head down towards the lake area. Well, I just wonder whether or not Francovic has got a problem with the Volvo, whether he realises that he only has to coast home. 
Richards is certainly making a charge. We'll put the watch on them again. France, if it goes by our commentary point, at last count it was 6.7 seconds. The gap is now 4.5. Wilco was right. Now it's 120 metres. Dropping into the loop area, Robbie Francovic has he got tyre trouble? He is going to have to guide this home, and Gentleman Jim is closing all the time in the BMW 635. Here's Francovic. He's part of the circuit, the turbo getting away nicely, heading down to uh, the left-hander at Honda. Laps on his side, but you'll shortly see the familiar figure, the familiar sight of that black BMW of Jim Richards, 635. And Frank Gardner, We've been telling Jim you're closing at a couple of seconds a lap. But whether or not Robbie can tweak it, heading up the hill, here he comes, and there's the gap. Two laps remain in the opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Francovic, the turbo, turned up, going for broke. And the gap is now 3.5 seconds. He's pulled another second in that lap. And can Richards make it 12 out of 12 at Amaru? And problems here for Gary Rogers in the 23 BMW. Some smoke pouring out of the car as uh, Peter Brock will come around the outside of him. Oh yes, that doesn't look good at all for Gary Rogers. Brock being time, we should uh, point out, has been able to come back from eighth past Charlie O'Brien and presently is up to sixth. Okay, Gary Rogers exits with a lap and a half remaining. And here is Robbie Francovic. He will take the last lap board next time around. Richards closing all the time behind him. The gap now 2.2 seconds. 2.2, so he's been pulling him in at probably 1.8 a lap. The last lap board is about ready to come out. One lap remains in the opening round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Gentlemen, Jim Richards, the 85 champion, is on the boil. The man in front of him is Aucklander Robbie Francovic in the Mark Petch Turbo Volvo. Well, there have been two great drives in this race and they're running first and second. Yes, very gingerly through the corners. I would think maybe as a tyre problem. Yep, I'd say tyres are shot on the car. Jag parts, number 24K entry, parked up out of everyone's way. Francovic treating this almost like a ballerina on ice as he comes down. Look at Richards closing all the time. There's some lap cars coming into play. The last half lap of this race and Francovic comes out of the bend and Richards is on the boil going after him as they come down now to the final. A right-hander, a slow car coming up. Frank Gardner steps up, waits to see who's going to win the championship opener. Robbie Francovic of Auckland comes into the final corner in the Mark Petch Volvo. Richards closes, but going across the strike to take the checker, it goes to Volvo Power. Second place across the line is going to go to Jim Richards, and a great finish to Richards. And third across the line is going to be Tony Longhurst in the second of the JPS BMWs. A great drive from Robbie Francovic in car number two. Let's have a look at the placings. Francovic the winner in the Volvo 242. Second place to Jim Richards in the JPS BMW. And third place going to Tony Longhurst in the BMW 325. Well, there's the man. He's done it. He joined the touring car circus last year at Sandown in Victoria. They had problems there, but a week later, of course, he struck pay dirt at Simmons Plains in Tasmania winning his uh, first of uh, two, taking his first of two victories for the Australian Championship. And boy, hasn't he started uh, today's uh, title on a fine note, Neil Crompton. He has indeed. And uh, he will go now to Tasmania next weekend with confidence. And what a performance from Jim Richards. I thought that uh, he was almost a write-off there in the first 10 laps, Mike. He was going backwards at a great rate of knots and then recovered in the 635, the bigger of the two BMWs that he had the option of driving and got to within 1.8 seconds at the end. Make no mistake, no right off the Commodores just yet. This is a very strange racetrack, Amaru Park. Things happen here with the big cars that you couldn't believe anywhere else. And we'll see how the, the Brock Mobile Commodores and of course uh, Dick Johnson fare when they go to Simmons Plains in Tasmania next weekend for round two. Incidentally, Dick finished in fourth position, followed by Peter Brock in fifth. Great performance from Pete to recover. And then uh, Charlie O'Brien in car number seven in sixth. Gary Wilkinson has got our race winner. We'll be crossing to shortly to Gary with Robbie Francovic, who will have a grin from ear to ear. He's done it the tough way, but uh, deserves the recognition he's about to receive. And a shake of hands there from Jim Richards. Well done. Excellent. Robbie Francovic takes 
round one today from the JPS duo of Jim Richards and, of course, Tony Longhurst. Let's go down to Gary Wilkinson. Hey, what a big effort. Robbie Francovic, congratulations. Well, I haven't seen you guys all weekend. But you're here talking to me now, and I hope you will for the rest of the rounds. Well, this is the right into the business, isn't it? Certainly is. Hey, you did a great job, but it was getting close to the finish. Yeah, well, that's what you call a good judge race, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you stuck with the 635. It was the right choice. Uh, almost bought it off. Well, I was wondering there whether it was the right choice, but uh, yes, no, it's uh, probably a bit more development in the little three-car, and it'll be the one to go for sure. But, Robbie, congratulations to him. He drove a top race. Did exactly what I would have done. <laughs> Tony, great drive by you as well. You were giving Peter Brock and uh, Dick a bit of hurry up there for a while. Yeah, really had a good workout. Uh, I wore my back tyre out, and that caused my problems for the rest of the race. OK, thanks, and congratulations again, Robbie Francovic. Hope you've enjoyed our telecast of the Better Breaks 100 from Amaru Park.